let's see if we're actually live here now. I hope we are. Good more, Good evening, everybody. It's Bernard Nomberg. Hopefully, we're posting in the good. We're in the right space, the right place. And this is a new new thing I'm trying out. It's called Bud's Hobby News and Views. And what I'm going to do, I don't know if it'll be every week or how often we're going to do this, but I want to create a show that promotes what we're doing in the hobby in Alabama. And it's grown substantially, and there's so many great shops in the state of Alabama, so many great shows that are going on. I want to continue to promote that. I want to bring on people who make it happen in our state. Now, for those of you who do or don't know me, I'm Bernard Nomberg in Birmingham, Alabama. I moderate this group. I collect vintage, predominantly baseball, Hall of Fame rookie cards. About a year ago, I sold 99% of my collection, and I'll talk about that another time. Tonight's uh, introduction is just going to be a couple of minutes. I want to talk about the show and the format and what I'm hoping to, to provide. And I want to just share a couple of, of things of, of note. If you're here hoping to get card prices to find out what's the newest and greatest and hottest cards in different sports, this may not be the right space for you because that's just not my, that's not my lane. That's not my, my forte. My forte is vintage cards, predominantly baseball, some football, some basketball. I'm very enthusiastic about the sport. I want to share and spread what others are doing. I want to talk about hobby news. I want to talk about things that you guys want to talk about outside of what are the hottest current cards. We will talk about card uh, release dates, things like that, but I'm going to bring on shop owners. I'm going to bring on card organizers and sponsors. I'm going to have other collectors come on. Probably be on Sunday evenings between 7 and 9 p.m. Central. 20 to maybe 30 minutes at, at tops because I want to be respectful of your time. It's not going to be a lot of opinions. I don't like those shows. Uh, maybe some of you folks like those because there are a lot of personalities in the hobby. It's just not for me. I want to provide some content. I want to be of value to you guys while being respectful of your time because there are way too many podcasts out there in the hobby. So I want to hear if you would, in the comments section, I want to hear from you guys what you do want to hear. What information, what kind of news, what kind of things would be of interest to you uh, on a weekly or every other week uh, basis. And let's see. Uh, I do want to reemphasize, maybe for those who just joined our group in the last couple of days, weeks, months, there is a guides section in our Alabama Sports Card Collectors Group, which, by the way, is, is more than 650 strong, and I'm so, so proud of that. So many folks have found us. There's a guide section, and in the guide section really only has two topics. One are the local card shops that are throughout the state, and the second are the upcoming shows that are not just in our state, but maybe on the Florida Panhandle, maybe over in Atlanta, uh, Nashville, uh, Jackson, Mississippi, just the contiguous to Alabama. I try to keep up with what shows are coming up. Daniel does a great a great job with the flip, and he sends me stuff all the time. But if you go to the guide section, those are the two things you'll find. The card shops as the card shows. Now, the upcoming card show in our, our state is the next one is in Trustful on the 21st, and there's a, a, a trade uh, trade night the night before which I believe is in Alabaster and if you scroll through our discussion feed It'll be in there. I've got all the details uh, But I know that's the next show uh, Coming up. I know there's one maybe in Atlanta area in mid-February uh, There's always one in Nashville every few weeks But the 21st in Trustful and then the night before I think it's in Alabaster. Maybe it's sports nuts But speaking of that I want to share with you guys and I'm just going to take a few minutes uh, this evening. Do you realize that we have more than 10 card shops in our state? And I think that's fantastic. For some reason, the Dothan area doesn't have one. Montgomery has comics, but they uh, they have just a little bit of, of, of cards. 
But we've got Sports Nuts Collectibles. They, obviously, that's Curtis and Alabaster. Magic City Collectibles. Brooks and his family are doing a bang-up job with their new uh, shop in Homewood. Gadsden Sports Cards and Antiques. Ridge Runner Sports Cards in Moulton. Coleman Sports Cards in Coleman. Of course, that's Johnny, and I'm going to have Johnny on the show next week. Big Hit Cards uh, in Spanish Fort. That's Nathan. I was just down there a few weeks ago. All-Star Sports Cards Emporium in, in Trustful. That's Mike. I've been there many times. Rivalry Sports in Chelsea. That's Chris. Jackson Sports Cards up in Scottsboro. Champs Sports Cards in Huntsville. And the Upper Deck in Rogersville. If I've left out your shop, please let me know. It's not for... Uh, I, I didn't intentionally mean to leave out anybody. And if any of these shops are no longer operating, please let me know. Please throw in the comments, if you will. But I wanted to make sure that in the feed as well as in tonight's show i wanted to make sure we told you guys about all of those shops that are throughout our state and it's been a very active year this last almost two years with shows seems like about every other month or even every month we've got shows somewhere in the state I want to welcome we got a bunch of folks in here we got carlos we got mike trey clay thank you fellas for joining in if you have comments or questions just throw them in the live chat i'm monitoring that did you guys know that January is National Hobby Month? I'm not really sure what that means. I just read that in, <laughs> in Sports Collector's Digest, but I figured I'd share that. And uh, let's see, Mike says he owned a card shop in Germany for about four years in the late 90s while stationed. Oh, that's fantastic. Very good. Well, Mike, where are you based, bud? And we will certainly, if you've got a show you're organizing, I certainly want to uh, want to promote that, that's for sure. Really, the only two topics that I wanted to bring up tonight, uh, one's pretty obvious, the other is not so obvious, but it's, to me, it's the constant tug, the pull between eBay and local card shops. And I'm advocating on behalf of the LCSs in our state. I think they do a fantastic job. I think they're the heart and soul of our hobby. eBay is very easy to get on there and find what you want bid on it maybe you get lucky maybe you get a good price maybe you find more of variety of course that that you would in most of our shops or most shops really but there's a, a really a delicate balance there between purchasing stuff bidding stuff selling things on ebay based on financial considerations of course and other things but i really think it's super important very important to support our card shops they give back most of them will be at the shows, or if they're not at the shows, it's because they don't have anybody to man their shop that day. But try to support them. And that's as much as I'll say for now, but we will have several of the shop owners in the upcoming weeks. Uh, Mike, I hope you get to put together a show and a shop, et cetera, in Millbrook. I'll certainly promote it here. I'll come visit as I visited all the card shops in the state in this last year, and it's been a lot of fun for me. Welcome, Heath. Thank you for for coming in. Again, I'm Bernard Nomberg, a curate or, or administrator, if you will. Uh, the Alabama Sports Card Collectors Group. I'm going to try and do this uh, every week on Sundays or every other week on Sundays, depending on our guests, uh, for about 20 to 30 minutes max. We'll try and do it between 7 and 9 p.m. each week. And I'll probably turn this into a podcast as well. That's pretty easy to do these days. The other topic I wanted to share, and this is something for me that happened to me personally, I don't know if I've shared much or hinted around on it on the site, but I actually had a house fire back in November, the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Thankfully, no people or dogs, pets were, were hurt. Just part of the house was damaged and burned. And what the reason why I bring this up is not necessarily just to share that, is to talk about your sports card collection. No one ever wants to even think about if they have a fire or if they have water damage or, or some kind of problem in your home. Well, you've got to ask, if you're putting all this time, effort, energy into your collection, what are you doing to protect it? Is it insured? Do you have fireproof boxes? Do you have a safe at your house? Just ask yourself, what are you doing to protect your collection? I know a lot of people take, it to the, take their valuable cards to the bank and put it in their lockbox. Lock some people have fireproof safes in their home are you insured? A lot of insurance companies won't necessarily insure them. Some do. Michael Osaki out of the Chicago area is 
to me, the foremost expert when it comes to insurance claims, when it comes to evaluating um, hobby collections, memorabilia, et cetera. And I'll get Mike on the show eventually, but he has preached for a long time that you need to be proactive in some way to collect, to deal with your collection. Well, a year ago, as I said a little while ago, a year ago, I sold most of my collection, 80 to 100,000 cards. It, it, and this will say for another show, but it wasn't doing me any good. I wasn't enjoying all those boxes of cards just in a big room. And anyway, I sold the majority of the collection. I kept four or 500 cards of what I collect, what's important to me. Well, when I had this fire, it didn't even dawn on me to try to bring some of the cards out of the house because things were that quick and that we, immediate that we needed to get to safety and get out. By the grace of God and whatever else was looking over my shoulder that evening, none of my cards were damaged. Had some smoke, but as I learned from Mike and others, I put the ones that I thought that were had smoke affiliated or set on them in a sealed box for about 10 days with mothballs. Long story short, I opened up 10 days later, the smoke smell was completely gone. I put the cards out in the uh, air to, to let fresh air hit them and then all the mothball smell went away after a day. Very fortunate because those cards were in the room adjacent to where the fire was. Thankfully, it was contained by the fire department. My cards, the majority of them were already in fireproof cases that we all have seen. Well, those cases did their job. And I have subsequently, or I'm in the process of replacing those cases because of the smell, but no cards were damaged. And it's just, it proved again, a point of why you need to be proactive when it comes to protecting your collection. Think about it this way. If you're gonna have artwork, if you're gonna have valuables in your home, most people are gonna be proactive to ensure those things, those valuables. You need to do the same thing for your card collection because some of those I'm sure are quite valuable, not just sentimental to yourself, but valuable. So I can talk to you offline about some of the the uh, fireproof boxes that I now uh, am replacing, but they did their job. And my point being bringing it up is figure out what way to protect your collection. So that's, that's all I wanted to share about those two subjects this evening. Uh, we'll have a lot of more subjects in the days and weeks ahead. I want to thank those of you who stopped in for just a minute or two. And that's all that I've got tonight. There'll be more promotions and more specifics about the times and dates and the guests coming up on Alabama Sports Cards Collectors Group, our Facebook group here. It is a private group, so you can invite your friends and, and folks who you think may benefit or have enjoyment. But again, as you guys know in this group, we, we quit buying and selling cards. It's just too difficult. It drove me up a wall. There are many other sites, many other places for, for you to, to buy and sell your collections. This site is really about sharing hobby knowledge, promoting shows, promoting shops, and other things like that, promoting the hobby. So thank you guys for coming in for a few minutes. I'm at about 15, 16 minute mark or so with Bud's Hobby News and Views for this evening. Hope you all are safe. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next Sunday at some time. Have a good week. Take care.